Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. Since I got my hands onto AMD's Ryzen 7 3700X and since my current CPU in my main editing PC behind me has the same amount of core and thread count as it, that being Intel's a bit over 5 years old 8 core 16 thread Core i7-5960X, which was back then an enthusiast level CPU coming from the X99 platform and with a pretty hefty $1000 price tag, I was thinking why not compare these two CPUs just for the fun of it. Of course, it's not that hard to predict the results, it's obvious that the new and very capable Ryzen 7 3700X will outperform it on account of its generational architectural improvements, but I really wanted to see what can we today get performance-wise with that same amount of core and thread count, but for a third of the price. Since I have a GTX 1050 Ti series graphics card in my main editing PC, I've also used the same series card in the Ryzen system, although that one being from a different manufacturer, but in this case that's not a big deal. Just so we can have somewhat of a level field, since I before all want to see the difference in the rendering times using Adobe's Premiere Pro, which is something that I use the most on my daily PC. In a way, I intentionally didn't want to put anything stronger than this GPU series, just so the CPU can take over more load and thus having conditionally speaking, larger influence on the rendering time, or to put it differently, so I can get a more visible performance difference between these two CPUs. Just a short disclaimer before I start, this will not be a super serious apples to apple, clock to clock comparison. This video idea came to me out of nowhere, which is why I wanted to focus more on the raw performance comparison with your few common CPU benchmarks. Just a straightforward, mostly synthetic benchmark comparison. Plus, before all, I currently cannot produce a perfect testing environment from scratch, since this PC behind me is my daily machine, so it needs to be up and running so I can do my day-to-day -day work on it. I assume that a really small amount of people will benefit out of this comparison, since this Intel CPU is not a mainstream model, so this will be more of an exploring type of video just to satisfy some curiosity. With that said, my personal PC has double the RAM compared to my test rig, 32 instead of 16GB, but that will not affect my bottom line, which I'm hunting for here, and that's to see that raw performance difference. It's not like we are expecting a 2-3% to of difference between these two CPUs, it will be much bigger than that, so I really don't have to nitpick. Of course, we have to also have in mind that Ryzen 7 3700X cores roughly run at 400 to 800 MHz more than the cores on Intel's Core i7-5960X, which by itself brings in a decent performance jump to begin with, while, as I said, they both have the same amount of cores and threads. Last but not the least, this Ryzen test system has a more cleaner Windows install, since my personal PC has been running for the last year, so it may perform a bit worse on account of that, but again, nothing that will affect the bigger picture here, I just wanted you to know this. Actually, I'm planning to do a couple of more videos with this Ryzen 7 3700X CPU. Before all, I'm aiming to build an ITX gaming and editing PC with it, which will probably end up replacing my current personal system, so be sure to stick around and subscribe for that one. Until then, let's jump over and check out the performance comparison. First in line, of course, is the one and only Cinebench. I've used both the R15 and R20 versions of it, and as you can see here, with no surprise whatsoever, the Ryzen 7 3700X crushes the Core i7-5960X by a whooping margin of around 60% in multi-core testing in both versions, and with a 50% in R15 and 60% in R20 difference when it comes to the single core testing, all thanks to its architectural and IPC advantage paired with higher clocks. This theme continues on with other CPU intensive benchmarks like the Blender 7-zip compression and pop rate testing, where the Ryzen 7 3700X roughly brings in on average 50% performance increase compared to the Core i7-5960X.
coming to the part of testing in which I was most interested in checking out Adobe's Premiere Pro, in particular the rendering times, I've used the 1 minute long 4K clip stacked with few After Effects sequences and color adjustment layers just to make it overall more CPU intensive. So what did I saw here? With using both the GPU and CPU for rendering, the Ryzen 7 3700X did the export in about 11 and a half minutes, while the Core i7-5960X did the same job by about 2 and a half minutes slower. Knowing that the most of the job is done by the GPU when it comes to rendering, the fact that only the CPU managed to lower down the rendering time by about 20% speaks for itself. And once it gets paired with a stronger GPU, it's going to be an even better combination for video editing and rendering. Since these are GTX 1050 Ti series graphics card in question, I haven't done any game testing, but rather just the 3D Mark one, as you can see it here, so you can have at least some reference. This is before all because I don't have any modern titles on my main editing PC, except FPV quad simulators, as my drives are pretty much constantly full with recorded content, but when I do want to play, I use the test PC configuration since it's loaded up with games. On the other hand, this Intel CPU was never meant for gaming, but rather for productivity work, especially since it boosts only up to 3.5 GHz. With the same GPUs in question, and most importantly with those being on the lower end of the gaming food chain, the results are basically the same on the graphics card side of things, since both CPUs can push them to their maximal performance potential, but on the other hand, the Ryzen 7 3700X again takes an easy win in the portion of the benchmarks where only the CPU is tested. Of course, it would make more sense to have a stronger GPU, just so we are not bottlenecked by its lack of power, thus utilizing and showing the exact CPU's potential to pull the best out of it, but I have no doubt with everything shown here up until now that that will be the case with the Ryzen 7 3700X. Of course, there's a bunch of other things that go in Ryzen's favor, like power consumption and TDP, both basically being half of Intel's, plus it has a larger L3 cache. All in all, everything you would expect improvement-wise when we consider 5 years of difference between them, but putting that aside for a moment, it was very interesting to see how these two CPUs stack against each other, not that I was trying to prove anything with it, I was just personally interested in seeing what does 5 years later mean in terms of this particular field, and I must admit, that feels light years away, and it sort of is when you look at the current market, not only that you get 50% more performance for a third of the price, but how the tables have completely turned, how Intel is now the one who has some catching up to do. Let's again check in in about 5 years, I hope I will still have the Ryzen 7 3700X with me until then, and you know what, I probably will since I'm planning to use it in my next build. That's it for this time from me guys, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw feel free to subscribe and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!